Welcome, one and all. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to The Late Show. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. Ladies and gentlemen, you hear that, John? You hear that? Yeah, I hear that. That can only mean one thing. We are live, ladies and gentlemen. Coming to you live, coast to coast, all around the globe. After episode one of this summer's most compelling drama, the January 6th committee hearings, it's like Stranger Things. We met the monster years ago, and we're pretty sure the Russians are involved. (laughs) And like the stars of Stranger Things, I have noticeably aged. (laughs) Now, the monster in question is former president Mango Unchained. Prior, prior to these hearings, Republicans tried to claim that tonight was going to be a nothing burger. They were wrong. It was a juicy double cheeseburger stuffed with burger between two buns made of burger smothered in a zesty burger sauce. There was so much burger, they jammed this five pounds of burger in a three pound bag. There was so much burger that they replaced the Capitol Dome with a sesame seed bun. (laughs) It was such a juicy burger that Fox News knew that even their viewers would be tempted to take a bite, which is why, and this is true, for the first hour of his show, opposite the hearings, Tucker Carlson took no commercial breaks. (laughs) Do you understand what that means? Fox News is willing to lose money to keep their viewers from flipping over and accidentally learning information. (laughs) But I'm not surprised. I'm not... That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Come on, man. But I'm I'm really not surprised. That's the first rule of any cult. Never leave the compound. (laughs) Second rule, present your testicles to the tanning station. (laughs) Also based on a true story. Now... We, we may, we've heard many of these details before, but it made my heart well with gratitude to see the committee weave them together in a compelling case that January 6th was not a spontaneous gathering of vape-fueled neo-knuckleheads that got out of control. It was, in fact, an attack premeditated by the President of the United States to prevent the peaceful transfer of power for the first time in our nation's history. And first up, Committee chairman and man saying who's got two thumbs and one is my head. (laughs) Benny Thompson. Chairman Thompson kicked off the hearing with a little of his bio. I'm from a part of the country where people justify the actions of slavery, the Ku Klux Klan, and lynching. So you were born on Twitter? (laughs) Thompson spoke about what united the bipartisan members of the committee as well as Americans everywhere. East Coast, West Coast, and the heartland. All of us have one thing in common. If you fry it, we will eat it. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Mm. Close to my heart. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Thompson played damning footage of one of the former president's toadiest of toadies, former Attorney General Bill Barr. I made it clear I did not agree with the idea of saying the election was stolen and putting out this stuff, which I told the president was bullshit. Watch your language, toad man. (laughs) You kiss your princess with that mouth? (laughs) Then Thompson reminds us just how serious the Capitol riot was. As we provide answers to American people about January 6th, it's important that we remember exactly what took place, that this was no tourist visit to the Capitol. Yes, this was no tourist visit. There were no children. In fact, I'm pretty sure it was all dads who lost custody. (laughs) Then... (laughs) Then it was time for the ranking Republican, Wyoming Representative Liz Cheney, Seen here, shocked as you are, that she's the hero of this story. (laughs) Cheney promised these hearings will bring the receipts. You will see evidence of what motivated this violence. Wow. They have footage of the former president's dad not hugging him? (laughs) Then... (laughs) You gotta imagine. You gotta imagine that's part of it. 
<laughs> then Cheney hit the former president where it hurts him, right in the Ivanka. Because they rolled in footage of the first daughter's reaction in her testimony to Barr calling her father, father's charges of election fraud total BS. I respect Attorney General Barr. Um, so I accepted what he said, was saying. That must have been a bittersweet moment for the president. She finally screwed him. <laughs> you okay? You okay? You okay? Deep breaths, y'all. <laughs> Deep. <laughs> Keep breathing. Keep breathing. It's going to be a long summer. Cheney. <laughs> Cheney also showed a clip of General Mark Milley explaining that Vice President Pence was the only leader who made any attempt to call for defense of the Capitol that day. There were two, uh, two or three calls with Vice President Pence. He was very animated. You know how crazy things have got to be <laughs> for Mike Pence to get very animated? <laughs> normally, normally... Normally, the wildest he gets is wearing khakis with only one pleat. <laughs> then the committee played some never-before-seen footage of the insurrection. And if you need any more proof that the violence was motivated by the former presidents, here's one of the writers quoting him directly. Mike Pence didn't have the courage to do what should have been done to protect our country and our Constitution, giving states a chance to certify a corrected set of facts. They were reading his tweets directly as they stormed the Capitol. The only way he could be directing them more is if he had sent them over IKEA instructions for the gallows. <laughs> Hangman pens. Hangman pens. Now, and here's the dealio. Here's the thing, my friends. Yeah. Here's the thing. That's not far from the truth, as Cheney explained. And aware of the rioters' chance to hang Mike Pence, the president responded with this sentiment, quote, maybe our supporters have the right idea. Mike Pence, quote, deserves it. Wow. That's a hell of a reward for Pence's four years of boot-licking loyalty. <laughs> it's like you're retiring and your boss gives you a gold watch with the inscription, you ticked me off, time to meet Jesus. <laughs> then... Then we got to hear from uh, a couple of witnesses, starting with Officer Carolyn Edwards, one of the first Capitol Police injured. Officer Edwards spoke strongly about her views on that day. I was an American, standing face to face with other Americans, asking myself how many times, many, many times, how we had gotten here. Well, it's, it's kind of complicated, but it all started at the White House Correspondents' Dinner in 2011 when a black president made fun of a man with a very big ego and a very small penis. <laughs> and then it just kind of moved from there. It just kind of... <laughs> Committee also heard from documentarian and men's warehouse spokesman saying, you're gonna be haunted by the way I look. Nick Quested, in the run-up to January 6th, Quested was embedded with the Proud Boys, and his crew captured horrifying footage like this. Freedom! <laughs> Mel Gibson's career has really gone downhill. <laughs> Quested. Quested laid out insider details of the Proud Boys' activities, including what they did just before the riot. We went for lunch. We went for tuckers. <laughs> May I remind you, January 6th was a Wednesday. <laughs> Tearing up the Constitution is one thing, but they violated the sanctity of Taco Tuesday. <laughs> then... We went for tuckers. We went for tuckers. Then Officer Edwards described the Proud Boys' rallying cry. They came up chanting, um, F-U-C-K, Antifa. That might be the most shocking testimony of the evening. The Proud Boys can spell? 
And soon after that, soon after that, the night was over. Night one came to a close. After two hours of documentary evidence and testimony, we learned that this insurrectionist conspiracy was, like everything else associated with that last administration, exactly what you thought, but worse than you could have imagined. The next episode drops on Monday morning. And to quote the former president, be there will be wild. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guest is star of Marvel's Sean Chi, Simu Yu, and I'll be giving the Paul Bear questionnaire to our very own Mr. John Baptiste.